We're back on F1 Manager 2024 for the grid changes every race season. This race, we've got Esteban Ocon and Charles Leclerc in the car for the Japanese Grand Prix, and this is the grid. So Ocon at Williams, Albon is at Sauber, Kevin Magnussen back at Haas once again, Max Verstappen is in an Alpine, Hulkenberg also at Alpine, Lando Norris at Aston Martin. We've of course got Charles Leclerc with us at Williams. Carlos Sainz in Red Bull, Valtteri Bottas back at Sauber again where he begun this career, uh, Zhou Guan Yu still at Mercedes, Sergio, uh, sorry, George Russell is still at Mercedes, Sergio Perez at Haas, Logan Sargent is in an RB, Fernando Alonso back at Aston Martin for a third time, RB once again has Oscar Piastri, Daniel Ricciardo at Ferrari, Lewis Hamilton also at Ferrari, Yuki Tsunoda, pointless at Red Bull, Stroll at McLaren, and Pierre Gasly now at McLaren as well. So that is the lineup for this fourth round in Japan. Now we're going to upgrade the car part test center um, to you know get that going a little bit, hopefully get some good upgrades coming through. I'm also going to design some side pods. We're just deciding how we want to go with these. I think we're going to go for a rush with that. So we're going to get that going, get some side pods designed. Uh, our manufacturing is full at the moment. We're also going to start scouting for some new staff. So we're going to scout Julian Roos from Alpine uh, just to try him out. We're also going to scout Dirk De Beer from Alpine as well because um, they're kind of the lower end of the... Um, of the people that we can scout out for. So we're gonna try and go for that. We're also gonna manufacture front wings now that that has been designed. So going for four as we pretty much always do. Uh, we're just gonna go for normal, a normal approach. So get those going. Hopefully we'll have those. We should actually have those for this weekend. We're also gonna then manufacture um, side pods as well because they also completed because there's quite a big gap between weekends here so once again four we're going to rush these ones to get them in time for this next race get that on the car there we go um, and uh, now we can design something again this time we're going to design side pods uh, there we go once again we're just going normal because we, we don't really need to do anything else at this point in time and that is that and as we go into this as you can see both drivers now have enthusiastic mentality i actually upped every driver's mentality to enthusiastic in the database editor because i wanted to see if that really changed anything because a lot of drivers mentality was pretty damn low um you know it was it, getting kind of thrown around all over the place it was making people's uh, mentality very low so i'm um, i'm gonna start putting every drivers to enthusiastic every weekend so i don't know if it'll make a difference but i just thought we'll give it a try and this is a look at the performance and this is something that i'm a little bit skeptical of though because as you can see williams we have the least amount of upgrades of anyone um we've kind of stayed about the same position to Haas, although actually maybe a little bit closer to Haas. but you can see a lot of these teams have really big jumps up i mean look at rb there they had a jump up they're now ahead of aston martin on r d in williams we've been putting on as many upgrades as we can and um yeah i don't really understand how teams do these massive upgrades um from weekend to weekend if anybody knows how to do that please let me know because yeah i i really struggle to understand it maybe i need to start focusing my upgrades like specifically on certain parts of the car like low speed medium speed and stuff because i've just kind of been doing the balanced parts maybe that's not really doing enough so i might start experimenting with putting more you know looking at what parts of the car struggle the most like low speed high speed whatever and focusing on those sort of upgrades q1 goes pretty well we had intermediate conditions yuki sonoda the homeboy went quickest uh, we had both drivers in the top 10 max verstappen yes he's in an alpine but p20 for max verstappen very disappointing for him both salvers also out lance stroll in the mclaren and kevin magnuson in the Haas. q2 comes around and it is even wetter now or at least it looks wetter and a lot a lot more drab we're currently p11 and p15 
with Charles Leclerc here in P11. We're coming towards the end of this run and as we cross the line, it is a big improvement up to P3. So the track is a lot better than it was the first time around. Ocon is way down in P15, but he should improve as well. That was a mega time from Leclerc to be up there. And as you can see, a bunch of people have already finished their laps, didn't go for another lap. So Leclerc's through into Q3. Can Ocon get through as well? Yes, he can. We have got both our cars into Q3 here in Japan. The wet weather is really helping us out. Both RBs are also through in second and third, so they are showing some very good performance. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo, probably the big one to not make it through to Q3 there. P11 in the Ferrari. So that's unfortunate for him. Everybody else, not really surprised. Both Aston Martins, guess makes sense now that RB are ahead of them. But as we now go into Q3, we'll look at a full lap here, starting with Charles Leclerc because he is the car ahead. And as we head into this first section, into the S's section, we see Leclerc going around here. Once again, it is intermediate conditions. I don't think it's raining right now, but um, the track is still damp enough to warrant using warrant using intermediate tires. 2.86 millimeters of rain. You can see there of water on the track. You can see in the top right, um, and there are splodges of, of rain on the on the camera. So maybe it is still raining a little bit. Um, Russell was the first across the line, but is 19.6 seconds behind Gasly. So I don't know what he did on his lap there. He's obviously not had a great time. He's probably going to be in P10 because that is a very poor lap from George Russell, of course, at Mercedes uh, still in this in this race. I think this is his third race for Mercedes because him and Joe, I believe, were at Mercedes last round. And of course, he was at Mercedes in round one as well. So... Uh, yeah, Russell, just like Alonso, uh, at his at his starting team for three out of the four races so far. Um, but we continue on here with Leclerc. He is green through the first two sectors, so uh, we we actually didn't go out for. We only did one flying lap in Q3. Everybody just waited until the end to go for one flying lap. Um, and as we come to cross the line, Sonoda goes quickest. We go P4. So it's not quite as good as I was hoping. Sargent puts in a blistering time to go P2 ahead of Piastri by about four tenths. And here comes Ocon. He's also green, of course, because this is the one and only lap of Q3. Uh, Leclerc, like I said, up there in P5. So good, but it looks like we're probably going to be towards the back end of this group as Ocon comes to cross the line. It's P8 for Ocon. Ocon beats Leclerc in this final part of qualifying. It's P8 and P9 for the Williams cars. P1 for Carlos Sainz. He gets pole position here with Sonoda in second and Hamilton P3. Logan Sargent in P4 in the RB. What a result that is for him. And yeah, we've got Ocon in P8 and Leclerc in P9. Both Williams into Q3. But what can we do in the race? It won't be long before we get underway here in Japan with 53 figure of eight laps around this historic circuit. Anything can happen at Suzuka as Kimi Raikkonen proved in 2005. The Finn battled all the way from 17th to win. Will we see a similar show of will and talent today, I wonder? Drivers will battle it out this weekend on the snaking turns of Suzuka, the only figure of eight track in Formula One. High-speed downforce will be the name of the game here, if teams want to secure a place on that podium. The teams are making their final preparations down in the pit lane, ahead of today's race. All right, so this is the prep for the race. The race is going to be dry, which uh, is a little bit worrying. I'm a bit worried that we're not going to have the speed in the dry with these cars, but we'll have to wait and see for this Japanese Grand Prix in F1 Manager 2024. The anticipation is really building here. The fans in attendance are absolutely buzzing with excitement. I suspect that we'll all be closely following Charles Leclerc in this one. They've done well to secure a P9 start and they'll be keen to convert that into some points. And the time has come. Let's go racing. 
The drivers are warmed up. They're ready to go here at the Japanese Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Here we go. Japanese Grand Prix is underway. Ocon ahead of Leclerc. It's the two Red Bulls on the front row as has been quite uh, quite common so far this season but Hamilton looks to be fighting with Sonoda through turn one Ocon has stayed in position Leclerc's dropped down to P11 though down behind Ricardo and Russell so not a great start for Leclerc in this race the two Aston Martins one of them on the grass there going completely through the grass I believe that was Fernando Alonso um, as Hamilton has gotten up to second place, Sonoda's down to third and he's already dropped back quite a lot actually. So I don't know what's happened to Yuki Sonoda there, but Hamilton, uh, oh, we're seeing there from our engineer that Sonoda has damage. So I don't see any, see any, you know, noticeable like front wing damage or anything, but obviously things not going too well. As on to lap number two and Hamilton, we just missed it, but Hamilton has now taken the lead. Of the Japanese Grand Prix so it is no longer a Red Bull at the front Lewis Hamilton from third on the grid is already up into the lead now George Russell uh, is once again trying to make moves this time I believe it is on Esteban Ocon he who gets pushed away onto the grass there um, and Russell is past so that's now Ocon down I think to P9 in this race yes it is and here, once again, we're at the front of the field. Carlos Sainz up the inside of Lewis Hamilton to retake the lead of this Japanese Grand Prix. And at that same time, Lando Norris has managed to get past Charles Leclerc. We look on board from Norris here. He's already side by side with Leclerc. There he is on the inside. Norris going to go round the outside. A little bit of argy-bargy through the final chicane there. But Norris gets ahead of Leclerc in upper position. Lando Norris, I believe the only driver so far to have scored a point in every race so far. All three races so far, Norris has scored a point, so can he keep that going? Daniel Ricciardo, after a poor quali, is making his way through as well. Once again, I believe that is past Esteban Ocon, because he's already got past Charles Leclerc. Uh, so, yep, that is Ricciardo now by that up into P10. And Alonso also trying to make moves after a bit of a poor start getting shoved onto the grass by his teammate. He's now trying to get past Leclerc up the inside of the hairpin. And Alonso gets past in the Aston Martin. Uh, and there he goes up another position. Ocon now under threat from Lando Norris. The two Aston Martins starting to show some pace. You can see that little... That little symbol on the left there alongside Alonso. He apparently has a mechanical issue, although it doesn't really seem to be affecting it affecting him at the moment. As Ocon's still trying to defend from Norris, but I don't think he's gonna really be able to do anything there. Ocon goes from the inside to the outside. He's gonna try and go around the outside. Is Alonso gonna try and make it three wide? Not really. Ocon's trying to fight this with Lando Norris. Can he stay ahead of the Aston Martin? No. No, he can't. He has gotten past, and that's now Ocon out of the points. So already we're out of the points with both our cars. Alonso once again making moves too. This is on, I believe, once again Esteban Ocon. And uh, yeah, Ocon is falling down the order. Points in this race after a very, a very promising qualifying look to be pretty much gone already. Is now there's a yellow flag. I'm searching around trying to find out what. Is going on here my race engineer uh, Sonoda's uh, sorry Leclerc's race engineer telling me that there's been a lockup the there's a crash involving there multiple cars oh no not Lance Stroll not Lance Stroll and he goes into the back of the Haas of Sergio Perez um, I believe Stroll is okay yes he will continue on but um, that's another crash another crash for Lance Stroll he has crashed in every race Bar, I think Bahrain. I think Bahrain's the only race he hasn't crashed out. Um, although he is still in this race at the moment, so still things to go for him. Things are getting a little bit worse for us, though, as now Nico Hulkenberg is past uh, one of our drivers. Uh, I believe that's Esteban Ocon. And yeah, that, that's an Alpine, a car that should be slower than us. So not great there. There's now the two Red Bulls side by side on track, and Sonoda has gotten past Sainz, who has fallen back from Hamilton who's now 2.8 seconds 
up in the lead. So Hamilton doing a very good job at the moment as the two Red Bulls start to fight. Now Ocon is gonna come back on Hulkenberg, who, yeah, he got overtaken by Hulkenberg just before, but he's now trying to go for a move into 130R. Has to back out at the moment, though. Hulkenberg keeps the outside line going into 130R. Ocon can't make the move there, but maybe down the front straight he can make something happen. Although uh, Leclerc's actually right behind uh, Ocon now. So our two drivers very close to each other, but Ocon's going to get a great run out of the final corner. Hulkenberg goes very defensive, but Ocon's going to go to the outside to go round the outside of turn one. Not quite though, not quite this time around. And now... We're going to let Leclerc just absolutely go for it. We haven't given team orders here, but Leclerc's just overtaking Ocon because he seems quicker. He's he's done better on the tire wear. There's a 3% tire wear difference between our two drivers. So Leclerc now ahead of Ocon, although Ocon will then get back past him once again. Then we have Sonoda once again getting past Sainz. Beautiful round the outside move there of a corner. You don't expect there to be an overtake. I almost wonder if that was orchestrated by Red Bull because that seemed very easy for Sonoda to make that move. Then we have our pit stops happening. Ocon into the pits for a set of medium compound tyres. So the strategy is to go soft, medium, soft. Tyre wear seems a bit higher than expected, but I'm hoping we can still make this work. Leclerc's swearing because Magnussen has just overtaken him in the house down to one I mean Leclerc even has DRS here and he's still not able to hang on because Magnussen just throws it up the inside of turn one very brave move for the Dane there to get up into P15 I believe uh, the numbers in the bottom left there aren't always correct it might actually be P14 no I think P15 is actually about right because now Leclerc comes in for his stop onto the mediums we're doing the same strategy with both cars just Leclerc comes in one lap after Ocon and he's in a bit of a bit of a has sandwich at the moment uh, as he comes out of the pits in P13 now to P16 um, and Hamilton the leader is now in and he's onto a set of soft so he's going soft soft and then I assume medium at the end so a little bit of a different strategy for him now Max Verstappen who started at P20 and last in this race is now caught up to our drivers and is blasting past one of them up a position there for Verstappen in the Alpine he will not be very happy in such a slow car uh, being as high up in the championship as he is but that is how this championship works Magnussen also getting a move done on another one of our drivers down the inside into turn one that is Magnussen now past and I mean Haas is kind of the, our main rival team uh, at the moment in this career you know they're closest with us on R&D so they're the ones that we want to beat if we can uh, Alonso's apparently still having mechanical issues so that's unfortunate for him we're now actually giving some team orders because Leclerc once again has better tyre wear he seems quicker so we're gonna let Leclerc go past Ocon try and catch so up to Magnussen and it gets even worse for us because now Bottas is getting past us although there is a tyre difference here Bottas is on the soft compound tyres he's gone on to his second set of softs we're on the medium so we're probably going to be slow at this point in the race but I'm hoping that we can come back at some of these guys towards the end as now there's a virtual safety car What's happened now? Oh, it's Stroll. It's Stroll again. The Stroll actually properly crashed out again here. All right, so he goes around the left hander. He's got a car on his inside. No contact, but Stroll just goes straight into the wall. And I believe that is Lance Stroll out of this race. McLaren not happy here, of course. And um, yeah, that is Lance Stroll out of this race. So that is three in a row crashes out of the race. Now lap 38, we're going to come in with Leclerc for soft tyres and we're going to double stack. So we had a big enough gap. Leclerc managed to open up a gap to Ocon and it's actually two very good 2.5 second, uh, second pit stops for our team. And we're now both on the soft compound tyres. So now I'm hoping we can now chase down those cars that overtook us on the softs in the second stint because they're now on the mediums. Pierre Gasly still trying to get his first points in this career mode. He's now just gone up to P5 ahead of Zhou Guan Yu. 
Now, lap 42, Leclerc has now caught back up to Bottas again. You can see Bottas is on the medium tyres, we're on the soft tyres, so we are now considerably quicker. And finally, we might start making some moves up in this race instead of going backwards. Leclerc now ahead of Bottas at the front and Hamilton is leading but he's now on mediums Sainz is now on soft compound tyres so now it's Red Bull in the hot seat and Carlos Sainz takes the lead back from Lewis Hamilton who's been looking pretty comfortable this race but just uh, with the with the strategy it's now come back to Red Bull and Sainz is pulling away at the front of this race is this going to be four for four wins for Red Bull Racing Ocon then a few laps later also catches up to Bottas who is going he's really you know defending into turn one but Ocon's going to go round the outside of turn one what a beautiful move for Esteban Ocon that looks so elegant such a beautiful round the outside move and now in the last three laps three laps to go Leclerc's now caught up to Magnussen can we make it P14 yes we can that is Leclerc up to P14 of course it's nowhere near where we started but it's more like where we expect to be with this car. Uh, but Leclerc is ahead of both Hasses, so that is good for us in the championship here. And, well, Carlos Sainz in the end will go on to win the Japanese Grand Prix by four and a half seconds to Lewis Hamilton and then an even bigger gap back to Sonoda. What a result Sainz for Carlos Sainz. Taken the win. There we go. It's a win for Sainz. And that's what happens when you drive with such skill and passion. They barely put a foot wrong. Great result for Carlos Sainz there to win this race. So that is, of course, four from four winners, four different winners in these first four races. But that's kind of expected with what we're doing with this championship. Um, Hamilton comes home second for his first podium of the season. He'll be a little annoyed that he didn't manage to get the win here. Sonoda is going to be on the podium for his home Grand Prix, his first ever podium. Charles Leclerc comes home P14 in the end. It's nowhere near where we qualified. Both cars in the top 10, but um, it's it's something i guess a bit annoying that both both alpines managed to finish ahead of us ocon finishes p16 in the end he cannot get past magnuson heading up to the podium now the spaniard adding another to his record and that's win number one of the season and it's sure to provide them with a real confidence boost and a lovely show of sportsmanship to conclude proceedings here in japan Yes, so Carlos Sainz wins the Japanese Grand Prix, his first win of the season. And yeah, what a result for him. What a result for Red Bull. Will Red Bull ever not win a race this season? Will they win every race? It's possible. It's definitely possible. Uh, but we'll have to see. Hamilton definitely gave them a run for their money in this one. And Ferrari are getting closer to Red Bull in the championship. Moving considerably ahead of McLaren who have really dropped the ball a little bit. But um, yeah, what a result. Piastri comes home for the final point of the race. And we ended up P14 and P16 losing a lot of positions. But I think that was mainly because we just really outperformed in qualifying in those wet conditions we really you know got some great pace on uh on the cars there in those conditions but just not in the dry in the driver's championship and carlos Sainz is actually now leading the driver's championship on 44 points 11 points ahead of esteban ocon so Sainz now leading this championship max verstappen once leading the championship is now in p6 he hasn't scored since round two so um yeah Hamilton uh, Verstappen will not be happy and now the only driver to not score a single point is Lars Stroll he is the only driver to not have a point on the board so far he is P20 dead last uh, with three DNFs in a row all three of them crashes Stroll you've really got to get yourself on the board because you are falling into obscurity and then in the constructors of course Red Bull are still considerably out in front but anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.